Lina is definitely vulnerable to that. So could go both ways entirely. Very curious to see how it plans out. And I, I, I remember that. The matchup in the wild card, Archon Prepare going against Vega, battle. Mag getting his Sand King matched up against MSS's uh, Clockwork. And even though Archon were able to get the better of the aggro lane on the bottom, MSS was punished so hard and Mag was able to get such a quick Blink Dagger on his Sand King, faster than even a jungling Sand King, he became a presence pretty damn fast and Vega just pretty much continued to snowball from there. Definitely yep. recommend checking out that VOD, but it looks like EG are going to do things a bit more cut and dry. Universe already heading to his offlane with his Ops Ward that he loves to get down, whether it be getting the extra side vision or blocking out the camp. It looks like he's just going to go for the extra side vision here. He's going to try to get up some solo farm time and be the same kind of presence that Matt was. Newbie, almost every game purge, I feel like they've done this. They have invaded into the enemy jungle early, whether it be a smoke or just a hefty movement. And now they plant the infamous double wards, one ops, one sentry, a lot of hate on that pole camp. It's really going to test PPD to make sure he's got his sentry wards ready to go. There, there's no way they can deward this with one sentry, by the way. It's going to take two no matter what. Yeah. And I like how they're slightly altering the sentry positioning before they put it slightly south of here, over in this location. And now they're putting it in the tree spot. It's a very, very well-known spot in the tree spot. And it's very likely they'll be able to find it, but it's going to be tough. And AOI is going to start off with begins. the dewarding. Let's see what he can get. I think he can get this obs ward because he'll probably place his first here. Yep, I'm smart. Nice. Good for you. Gets the obs ward. But Actually, technically... Oh, no, I'm looking it does at the not. Ops. It's, I was looking the at the block yeah, point yeah, yeah. is like right here. He'll have to put that one like maybe straight north of that pole camp yeah. if he wants to get the second one. He'll probably place it here-ish uh, under this tree yeah. and then that, then it will catch it. But yeah. in, I think he'll get this. Uh, AY historically is pretty good at dewarding and knowing little like mechanics things. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to get this. Very intelligent support player here. He's going to be accompanying Fear on the clinks here in the bottom. So a dual lane matchup, at least for now. It looks like PPD is going to venture towards the mid lane, maybe flirt with Universe in the off lane. We look to Juno on his clockwork. No surprise to see him do the classic cog block there. The block this time works out pretty nice for Mu. Already has it near the tower now. Sumail was able to charge out and lead him with a good 2 CS lead. He was going to quickly catch up and get some help here with the Static Storm, or not Static Storm, the Lightning Storm, rather. What do you think more about the Lina matchup against this Leshrek? You remember last game, Mu got that quick pick and got some assistance grabbing a hold of Owie here, but more of the just dry one-on-one -on -one matchup of Lina versus Lesh. I think it's a lot more dangerous for Lina here. Um, something I'm just noticing about Lesh now, he's got four base armor. That's actually really good. That, I feel like that needs a nerf right there. That's maybe the easy thing to nerf on Lesh, but uh, Lina, much, much less armor. She has a bigger attack range, I guess, but it's a lot easier for Lesh to harass the Lina because he just throws out lightning to CS, and sometimes they will bounce. So Sumail has to constantly adjust his positioning as a result. And the, the, the difference is a bit easier on the other side, I feel, so it's going to be a bit tough for him uh, to win this matchup, but at least he does have an Earthshaker in the area. June pokes out a bit with a cog wall, they trade some nukes, and he steps back, but he's not getting zoned back hard enough in this lane where he can't really leech off that sweet XP. As the two-minute mark does approach, he wants to get a hold of his bottom rune. Now he wants to prevent him from doing so. Probably not a one-on-one -on -one matchup he wants to mess with, so June's going to be able to grab that one up. And Banana, who temporarily gets blocked out from PPD, denies it. No rune for anyone if I'm not going to get it. Banana heads right back to the top lane instead. So just some casual trades from both fronts. PPD just continues to be this babysitter in the mid lane. He made a stack already down here on the southern part side. And he's just going to be there as a watch guard. Well, uh, Skyroth Mage was able to stack uh, the medium camp. Uh, he wanted to get the rune, unfortunately, but he was able to deward the pull as well. So his job now is basically just try to keep Clockwork as under level as possible. Clock is already level three, but he's doing his best. And at oh, some point, they're, they're going for Universe top lane here. A long committed dive. He has some Maledict residue on him, and they're going to get the kill. Sanchez gets that last trick of the Maledict as well and secures that one, but it's all Rabbit who's able to charge Radiant's on forward and get the work done. And it's going to be Newbie who do strike first in game two. The hardest part about this is that he ended up buying out a Ring of Regenerate before he died because he didn't have Boots money yet. It's not the item that you want first if possible. It's not the hugest deal, I guess, if you get level three because you're just jungling and not taking damage, but this really forces him. He can't even roam now early on because of this. So he's going to get a TP transferred to him and he's going to go back up there for the level three. He's going to now sit behind him, hopefully protect him from getting that level, to get that level three. Ain't going to be easy though. He's in with a burrow, grabbing a CS for himself. So I really don't imagine this uh, PL is going to be running into too much threat. They're already working with their own pull through here. Sanchang on the mark right now. 
On the other side, June up in arms with Owie in the meantime. They trade back and forth here. He'll decide to pull back. How's Fear doing? He's top of CS right now, 20 and 10. It looks like a very familiar buildup we saw from the previous game. Just hoping for a bit of a different outcome here. Not, not looking to get locked down too easily and scouted out. It looks like June's going to continue to get pushed back. So both off laners running into a little bit of a struggle. We look at the newbie jungle. Banana awarded making up a third stack here on their side. This is a lot of money to be made, whether it be for the PL or for Moo on his track. That is so many camps. <laughs> yeah, this is They're doing great. Fort Knox of far Daya's right nearby. And Mook can kill it really fast, too. It's like two lightnings and one stun, and he's going to have a bit of an acceleration there. And it's all the small creeps, too. You may want to just wait till he gets his ultimate, honestly. You can probably do it way more man efficiently. Regen rune on the bot rune, and Sumail's going to be able to pick that up with his boots. Almost level 6. Also got banana shifting on great observer ward for him, but that's going to get spotted completely, so they should be able to deward that. They know it's probably in this area. Sumail ends up pinging it out, and now they just got to to the sentry is the next thing. Uh, Universe also hitting level three, so he's killing the stacks as well. Uh, and in the off lane, uh, Rabbit's farming free, of course. 26 CS, he's matching. So, uh, off lane wise, I think pretty soon here, Universe is going to accelerate much farther, faster than Clockwork can, mm -hmm. especially because Clock has still been level three here. Um, AUI has been doing his best to zone him, but um, also focusing, focusing on stacks as well. So, he's having some trouble here compared to Sanking. I think Sanking is definitely going to power ahead. Yeah, Sam can definitely benefit the fallback of the play of the catch up here. Mid lane, Banana catches out Sumail a little too deep. And he gets easily punished oh, yeah. there. They even commit more of a rotation, but it's not even necessary. Just maybe being unaware as far as where Banana has been. Radiant's he's been all over the place. I mean, Frankie attack. drops what is quickly called the new newbie board here. It will get scouted out, but he's still hanging around mid lane enough that when Sumail pushes forward, he gets punished for it. Newbie up ahead now 2-0. Ooh, and a bottle pick up for attack. Phantom Lancer. Uh, you need some kind of way to keep your health up when you play Phantom Lancer, whether that's a Mask of Death, maybe a Vlad sometimes picked up, but he opts for the bottle, which is kind of cool because it allows you to save your haste runes, invises, things like that, so you can be a bit more movement focused. So I, I like that pickup there. Radiance top tower nice. And uh, PPD shifting to the off lane that gets up a level or two here, uh, since obviously the universe would rather just farm in the jungle. Much better for him. Uh, in terms of him, he's able to finish his tranquil boots as well as our short loot and continue to And with another room, man. This guy has been all over the top rooms this game. It's like the third straight for him, or at least denied. Now he's going to be venturing back to this mid lane here. Alone, probably saving up for the arcane. Radiance Boo top brings up the remainder of his mana. We'll head back and allow Banana to get a bit of solo time. Want to get that level six on the money if possible. Rabbit continues to eat fissures from PPD. I don't know if this is a game where PPD is going to go into a soul ring hereafter, but that would provide a lot of free farm. Looks like no, he's going to step off, get a couple of wards, hmm. reestablish some more map control for his team, more of a safety net. June on an adventure here will cross paths with Owie. But uh, they're just still eyeballing each other. Not until June is able to get the Radiant's slipshot ready. Top tower is under he's, attack. he's trying to get him baited into Sumail. Sumail has a Laguna. This is oh, an easy kill. Very that was, that easy was a good kill. bait. Really yeah. nicely done by AUI there. Just ran around the corner, ran into melee range, and then he saw blood. The clockwork clicks. Oh, man, I get a level here. I'm going to get some gold. And bam, lean in position, gets the kill. I really like that. Very nicely done. It's uh, EG now on the board with their first kill. Chuck over the overall net worth, we'll switch it across. See it's Sumail at the top with that kill, but shortly thereafter, both Gank coming on the bottom. You're right, smoked up, Sam Shang and Moo in tandem. Rumble here, they're gonna lead in Lightning Storm, they got the protection. Sam Shang's able to pop it, Jun shows right back up, and they're gonna get the first kill. Nicely done here, a good response from Newbie. Clockwork is able to participate after just being brought down previously. AUI picks up a level Radiant's 4 here. He's going to shift back to the safe lane. Magic, uh, Magic Bush, sorry, being awarded here by Newbie, which is going to prevent these camps from spawning. And the reason they're doing this is that they can stack large camps, which would then allow Clink to accelerate faster by always having the food available to eat. So that's a very aggressive ward. I think there's a good chance that they'll deward it later, but a couple camps of that not spawning will be yeah. very nice, especially because of Sanking. So how's Sanking, by the way? 875 gold. Having a bit of a tough time. Hitting level 6, though. 8 minutes here. Another stacked large camp, so he's still a bit vulnerable. Now Newbie's just moving into the enemy jungle, which is a good way to reduce their ability to farm that. So it's going to hurt the Sand King a bit, it's going to hurt the Clinks a bit, and the pressure is on, basically. There's only so many places to farm up, and so many people on EG who need that farm. If you're going to step off, he's going to get a quick death pack with his company here, but they are on the move. 
They're going to look to scout out their own woods, see if there's any invaders nearby. Moo already on the way out the other side, though. They might just take this party all the way, but do they have enough? The spot left. They're very split here. They're going to look for Moo. Oh, okay, they'll get the quick pick from the high Nicely done. Let me get some check as well. They want it. Concussive shot will slow him down. Now we on the move. Ancient seal, and that's going to be enough. Had you maybe gotten a few more time, Radiance a little bit more XP, had his hook shot, attack. maybe with a quick uh, response, things should have been different, but fortified. works out wonderfully for EG there. They get the pick on the prized core, Lashrak. But all the meanwhile, Rabbit continues to work top lane. He's desperate. No, gonna get denied. Tower. Very That's nicely done from Universe. And a cancel TV rotation from Sumail once Rabbit orders his step back. Yeah, and Universe didn't have mana there. Uh, enough for Burrow Strike. Otherwise, he definitely would have Burrow Strike there, which would have led into the Lina yeah. uh, chain stun and kill. So a bit unfortunate. If Universe maybe would have done slightly better in the early game, he might have had a bit of mana there. But that was still amazing smoke gank rotation. I can't believe they went for the Lesh there, but they had just enough range with the Flinks damage. And that was a solid kill against the enemy mid. So really, really big kill there on the Lesh. It's newbie though on the move. Smoked up June leading out the front. This time PBD he is trouble. level six. And uh PPD already dishes the fissure out. They are gonna get the quick kill on the banana, but look at the response that could be coming. They scout out some mail on the other side. June makes the jump, they get the catch, and they get the kill. Does get that Laguna off, brings June down to about half-life, nothing too desperate. They get fear with the dust. Nice set up for PvP. A follow up for Oh, what a miss. That war coming out from San Diego. Oh, my really God. Something else. My God. They drop a serious amount of damage and hurt. And Moo leads in with a beautiful split earth. And four from EG go down. That was just amazing Witch Doctor damage. That fight was going to be completely a win for EG if that ward didn't come through. I mean, the Fissure caught so many. Here on the outside, it was going to start right-clicking. He did have a huge attack speed, though. Not finishing trends yet, not having straight up due to using it before. And they weren't able to punish that, unfortunately, for them. So, four-man swing, and Newbie's going to probably be able to take the towers only for that. And TP the lane. It's like, oh, there's action. Maybe we can attack. punish this tower. I'm here. Radiant's middle tower Fortunately, not going to get the tower. Though Rabbit does have over 18, now 1,900 gold saved up. Are we anticipating this straight to defusal build up here on this PL, or is he going to step off for, you know, your good old reliable Yasha? Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Uh, really yeah, hard to say. He's got about 2k in the bank. Will he even, maybe he'll even rush BOTs. I feel like I've been seeing more and more carries do that rarely sometimes, and Peel's maybe an okay hero for that because it does take him a bit of time to ramp up. If you rush the Diffusal Blade, attack. it's very, very good early, but you kind of need a lot of Phantom Rush for that to be useful in my opinion, or it ends up being really, really valuable. Um, I just don't know if that's... Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it is going to be a BOT's rush. So he's going to be able to move around the map a lot faster and be participating in a lot more ganks and team fights. And he also doesn't have to spend the gold on the TP. So it's kind of like a weak Midas that also lets you team fight a lot. Uh, so kind of interesting build up. He could also... No, no, never mind. That he is can't go and visit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is the second tower takedown as well. So newbie... Come off with big picks, a big fight, and they're following up with the objectives that are necessary. EG find their own little responses, but they have yet to be able to really kind of push the envelope here and invade the Juby territory. Universe presses that takedown and does set him off from his blink a little bit longer. He's getting there though. Nearly 1,900 gold. He's going to be able to farm it up. He has the help from Owie just in case. But it does feel like they're putting a lot in this blink. I mean, it's super important. They're going to spot a rabbit and maybe no fear actually finding a creep instead. Uh, I think he might have missed click there actually. Radiance bottom maybe they did pull it instead on purpose attack. so the tower gets pressured without any threat to them dying perhaps. Radiant but they did de-aggro as well. Fortified. I really think fear missed click there. It's one of those in things at nighttime. You're like clicking through the darkness and all of a sudden click on a creep. Oh, Dyer's attack top shoot. tower is under attack. And then you break attack. your so, Pressure comes through. TPD. In this, but it's about to wear off here. And he dropped a sentry, even, but he's able to get the fissure off. Follow up Burrow, and that is a quick banana kill. He's looking to go for his own TP. Looks like he Radiant's will make it out. June, too slow Radiant's with the hook. Catches a creep instead. PBD makes it away, so will Universe and company. Great game. Very, very nice. Quick hit and run right there, and they get the tower taken down. I don't believe it was denied. No, it was taken down from fear. Super so. good work by UG there. Wonderful work.
burst down uh, Rubik just in time. He able to put a sentry down just for vision, so they wasted that 100 gold there. They got super value out of that gank. They're not letting up either, Purge. They just go back and they smoke once more, go right back on the move. It looks like they plan on heading towards the bottom where Boo has been farming up, but he's already on the way out. Looks like he's going for an axe. The Shrek, am I missing something? Point booster overclock? Uh, uh oh, PB maybe? Oh, Ooh. bam! Beautiful setup again from the boys in blue. They lead him with a beautiful burrow strike, follow up Mystic Flare, and they get the easy kill on this Lesh. There's, there's no way that that'll be a Axe Rush. Like, Axe is potentially useful on Lesh, but there's just better items. Octarine Core is usually the better, better option with, with no exceptions. But probably he got the point booster yeah. for the HP. And he had let, uh, Arcane Boots for the extra mana pool, and then he's like, all right, I need a BKB, because otherwise I'm going to get Skyra Silenced, into Burrow Strike, into Fissure, into Dragon Slave, and that alone will kill me. It won't even take a Laguna Blade, so I think he has to get a fast BKB in this game, otherwise he's just obviously the target every time. He's the main damage output, other than Death Ward, at least until Peel gets his big items in. Since he won BOTs, it's going to be off of that. Totally understandable, but you can't help but question when you see those two items together yeah, in inventory. Yeah, his, his like, items look really weird. If anything, I could buy him, like, Maybe would have gone brown boots into BKB with the point booster, but it's it's tough. It's definitely very tough here. Hard choice and a lot of nukes makes Moose job very hard here. Here comes a smoke now out from the side of newbie. June leading out the charge here with a hook shot in his pocket, ready to go. Has the blade mail. They're looking to intercept oh, the retreat of Owie and Universe, and it looks like they're going to be able to get him here. They pop, they see each other. Who's going to go first? The creeps are in the way of June. He goes right for a blade mail, which is going to be devastating work to Owie. But look at Universe. Report oh. with a beautiful epicenter, but it's not enough to finish him off. Oh, and they had just a plus one. Maybe a little clinks or someone to clean it all up. Big damage, but not enough, and they end up both going down. Newbie lose no one, and they continue their assault towards the bottom. Just a little too greedy from Universe there. I, I think AOI made the right play, throw the ult before you die, but instead, uh, Universe tried to get the triple kill. He Dyer's went in on the two supports that were still full HP. If he just would have committed on the clockwork, he guaranteed would have killed the clockwork, Radiant's and that would have been a true for nothing. So, and again, as soon as the fight happened and the gank happens, he BOTs and TPs in. This is the point of this build for Rabbit here. doesn't matter where he is, if his team gets Dyer's a successful team tower, fight, he guarantees that he can be there and force the tower advantage Dyer's immediately tower afterwards. And this fallen. is something really smart that I've seen almost no team do. It's, it's such a cool way to play. Radiant's the BOTs guarantees the tower. And towers win you the game. Taking down yes. towers is a part of the freaking game. It's an objective game after all, folks. And uh, new B seems to be really making the most of it here. Can't agree with you more. Heavy mobility that Banana's been able to utilize on his PL has certainly paid off. Three towers now down, the tier two on the bottom as well. Four actually all day. They continue to get a lot here, and EG are forced to kind of adventure out with their own bits of farm feeling that their own home is not too safe. So you have Sumail up here in Newbie Woods. Fear over on the other side farming it on it. He's trying to get. I don't know. I mean, he's got a Mythal Hammer for now, Purge. Might just be the Deso that he always loves to go for. Yeah, it's flying out right now, actually. Okay. And there it is. The Deso ready to go. And Sumail's also in the area, spending a lot of time in the enemy jungle. If he finds anybody that I have a look, again, Newbie is moving across the map. Oh, they scouted him the with a beautiful rocket. Karen oh. catches him, but a bump back out. But now he's... Oh, the Valerie Assault. He tried to go for a Valiant TP, but that ain't happening, my friend. He does end up getting dropped. Newbie get the one-man pick. This time, Universe not going to try to go in for any sort of triple kill. He's out of there as well. Heads back to base, but another successful pick for the Newbie squad. Now, they already had the Tier 2 taken down, but they're just having to scrap together the extra bits of gold, and they're going to take away the EG jungle farm. And had they have a more Roche lineup, they put, could go for Roche as well, but it doesn't look like they have nearly the tools necessary to take him down. I think the Rocket might have scouted at least Fear, possibly Sumail here. They're, they're pinging him, they're thinking maybe we can get this kill, but it's very, very difficult. If he's doppelganging in the right direction, he can dodge the Lena stun, definitely. He's gonna find Banana, find this is the kill. He's got a, oh, he had a Ghost Scepter. He could have lived there, but the Fissure being there is well guaranteed it, so. Nice positioning by PPD to be in the area, and this is one of the downsides of being so aggressive with your wards. If you put them all in the enemy jungle and they don't hang out there, they do nothing. And PG has basically been hanging out in newbie's jungle, and now they're finally getting some advantage from it. It's getting some kills, getting some picks. This is what they need to come back. We'll see what the newbie response is going to be to these infiltrators. Maybe they pull out their own smoke and they do a sweep or something, but it's apparent that their own jungle is now threatened. 
and not easy to adventure into. You see even Clockwork inching forward some bits of vision with his rocket just to make sure something is safe. And once they see nothing, they decide to pull back and head elsewhere. Looks like pressure coming in from Universe in the top lane now. He's going for that four staff. Certainly will help with the extra bits of mobility and help against the Clockwork Dyer's quite a bit. Top tower Sumail already has attack. his Yules. He has about 2,700 gold saved up, Purge. I, I feel like he's going Bloodstone since he got Soul Ring. Um, it's kind of a cool idea on Lina because it guarantees you have obscene mana regen, but uh, it also means that he can stay on the map and farm a lot more. Like, Yules is obviously a lot of mana regen, but it doesn't allow you to spam. And Bottle with that also doesn't, but the Soul Ring on top, that's like unlimited mana, more or less. Not sure yet if it'll be a Bloodstone, but if it is, what it basically allows you to do is constantly cast spells, and that means your Fiery Soul is always active. So in a way, by buying Bloodstone, you're guaranteeing yourself, like, 200 attack speed and a guaranteed 24 movement speed. So that may be the reasoning here. So it's like you're getting stats out of the fact that you get mana regen while also having HP. So a bit of a questionable build. He just bought a recipe here. Let's see what it is. It is the Bloodstone recipe. So he's picking up the Bloodstone. Lots of HP, lots of mana regen. And the other solution is if PL drains his mana, it's coming right back with the Bloodstone. We'll see if that's going to be a good enough answer. Sumail currently 1, 2, and 0. This series so far, he hasn't been as spicy as we've seen Sumail play. EG very, very serious about this. Definitely after that first game. Not looking to get a, a lead in with a shutdown. 0 and 2. Got a Roche going on on the side, so they're going to get that with their advantage. These guys five man so much. You can tell how organized they are, really. It's pretty amazing. It worked for him last year, Perch. Yeah. <laughs> it really did. They're like, all right, guys, this is the strat. We win. I mean, they're they're having that kind of team chemistry, they're regardless of the type of game you're looking to play, they just gave up. Definitely helps out. And yeah, they're just not feeling it right now. Okay. Maybe feel a bit opposed here. Maybe gander over their vision. I mean, they just saw two EG players mid, so maybe that's why they're going back in. Maybe they didn't see anybody, so they thought. Maybe we need to not be in here. I mean, they're going to be able to do this, but it's a little tough. Uh, I mean, it's they've got it, though. Yeah, I don't know. I they saw Sumail top. Get it done. Immortality. And it is going to be picked up from Banana. So your PL is going to be your Aegis uh, holder rabbit. here. What did I say? Rab banana? You said Banana. That's yeah. the second time, actually. Okay, Rabbit. Rabbit is playing PL. <laughs> I know yes. this. He's going to be playing your PA's head and bottom lane. He got the Aegis. And then for the rest of the company here, Including banana. They're gonna head up into their woods now. They've got vision they though. Anyone from EG. Ooh, he just found it. But he's like, I don't have time to go and get it. I gotta <laughs> yeah. get out of here. That is the worst feeling, man. Oh. That is act. Oh, and they're getting dewarded too. Did he? Did they get their sentry? He didn't get it. Okay. So that they have the chance of coming back within four minutes and killing this observer ward. <laughs> That's the worst feeling ever when you're about to dewarp, but you know that if you stick around and kill it, that you're gonna die. And then you start hitting it, and then they just die. That happens to me right. all the time. Bad it's feeling. Be fine though. It's it's not worth it. The, looks like a delicious 50 gold, but not gonna grab it. He's actually very mid star of this game. Um, he only has a magic wand actually. So that's PP I mean, all right, 21 minutes soul ring. <laughs> he really does play the five earth shaker. Like people the do six. not. Yeah. Yeah, they don't kid around about that. PBD always very much sacrificing himself for his team, buying all the Observer Wards. Uh, but in his defense, he's only died one time this game, which is amazing for an Earthshaker. Most Earthshakers are much more active, but EG is probably the only team that really plays like this with their Earthshaker. So, pretty cool to see. So, yeah, Bloodstone on Lina. He's got the Yules ready, and every time he casts a spell, he guarantees that he still has three fire soul, 255 attack speed. 24% movement speed. This guy's running at 477 all the time. That is incredible movement speed, actually. It's a playstyle difference. It's just what he how he wants to play Lena, and it definitely has some valuableness. Now, it's not very good if the clockwork cogs you and catches you and makes you stop moving, but if he doesn't get hit by that, it definitely gives him some ability to chase and uh, evade. Yeah. At that point, you're just maybe yules yourself and hope for the best that the cogs will come down yeah. and you can race yourself out from trouble. Ain't gonna be easy though. Yep, and again, newbie is five manning, big surprise, or better yet, four manning. Is PL here? Uh, where's PL? He's, oh, not he's actually pushing bottom. Might not okay. be there now, but he could be. He's actually moving to him. Oh, okay. That's an Aegis down. Sumel charges forward, counts him out, but he's not gonna make it away. Juke catches him on the way out, and he's got the dust pop. Sumel goes for the self-yules here. He is very bad, and he just ops his own head. 
the Bloodstone, that benefit, man, the Suicide is very nice there. That would have been big gold, PPD dying to the electric, but costing about a 10 second BKB, that's not terrible. Not terrible, and the suicide by Lina just so important. That would have been at least a level. Tons of gold given to the enemy team. Like despite Lina only being one, three, and zero, Sumel's actually playing pretty okay. I think. Like he burned the Aegis that prevents newbie from a being able to pressure as dangerously to the high ground. So I, I think it's completely worth trading your suicide there for for the uh, for the Aegis, especially at this stage in the game. Look at Fear. He is just scouting out for maybe any stragglers here. I haven't seen much from him as of recent, but he's yeah. able to throw together a BKB, a full 10-second yeah, one, that's and amazing. on top of his Desolator already, so he can now do some work. He just hasn't really been out there to find the work quite yet. He's more content on being able to build this bit of bomb, and then when Newbie try to sleep on him, he's going to show him really what it's made up here. We'll see if that's the case. He did the partial TP back, and now running immediately towards Rabbit. Will he spot the Sentry actually spots out Fear, so things get a little scary here today. Vision, June chasing after the after Universe. He's going to force that still. And a blink. He's waiting for the cog. Cog's gonna push him back. Universe gonna go the opposite way into trees. Burst strike first four staff next. And here comes TV. Will he be able to get out? Doesn't catch him. He makes it out. So does Owie. Fear doesn't feel threatened yet. He's gonna yes. still wait about for now. Good I'm, quick escape right there. He's gotta be scared though. Oh, Banana's got a light strike right. Really good spell to steal here. Instant cast time when they're playing Rubik instead of the delayed of Lesh yeah. and Lena. So he can easily chain stun for up to. 4.5 seconds. Yeah, with that tell. That is amazing. So, pretty scary for them. It's the poor man's Lina combo. Almost even better. You get your own little self fuels. Yeah. yeah, with the quick reaction. Makes it very, very nice. But, you see EG, they're going to work through their own side here. Clearing their jungle, I guess. No, yeah, they're just going to look at, continue to itemize. It hasn't really been on EG to pressure. It's very apparent that... Newbies seem to be more in control with the team fight for now. EG not looking to oppose it yet, but maybe go for their own quick picks and try to slip out. But here's Newbie again on the move. They have been very successful this game with the majority of their smokes. And when they have June out in front here, anything they spot, he has been on the money with a lot of his hooks. Sumail doesn't spot out. Alina oh, misses the hook. Nice AY's gonna juke right. I think he's still very dead though. Morrison yeah. does get the silence, but he pops blade mail in case there's a Mystic Claire response. It doesn't matter though, the rest of the team is there. EG just gonna be losing. They're a little support Owie, but it's just another kill for Newbie. Yeah, they're kind of poor work vision right now. I'm not quite sure if they got support of the water. I think they dropped the aggressive ward in the jungle got spotted, but they, oh, they have a gem on Witch Doctor, that explains everything. So, this one Observer where they do have on the map is good for anti-gem, but looks like they might swing in, trying to get behind Sumail, but instead they're gonna find PPD. If they do actually push in while PPD goes, oh wow, I should be dead right now, but it looks like they didn't think I was there, so. Yeah, he's able to make it back away, and Sumail just instead heads up more north and joins up with Fear and Universe and Company and doing some movie jungle farm. Nubi just going to have to pull back there without being able to find any sort of catch with the exception of Owie previous to it. But they have been slowing down a bit as far as the objectives go. They, I, I imagine they're looking to get this pick in mid lane so they can follow up with that tier two. But the opportunity really is not presented. Oh, one word. Ah, the one word they had is gone. PPD's got another one in his attack. inventory, but I think that's about it for now. That makes the game very, very difficult, especially when they five men. The, the counter to five men is see where they are and go somewhere else. Get farm, split push, but when you don't know where they're moving, you're just going to keep running into five heroes, which is basically what keeps happening. One pick, one pick, one pick. And hopefully for EG, they can keep their farm up. Keep Lena getting another item and another item. She needs BKB so bad, because once she gets it, she's going to be a huge threat. Universe by them might be able, not Universe Fear rather, might be able to throw together his next game. Be right now holding about 1,500 gold. Where do you go from here after you've already completed your Deso and BKB? Uh, maybe Diffusal Blade. Maybe because it will be able to be used to remove the Ghost Scepter. It also does all physical damage, so it does kind of stack with the Desolator, but as a whole, it's a weak damage item. It's a possibility. Probably better off just building a Daedalus, though, just for massive physical damage output. You could also get a Solar Crest. It's good against the PL because it'll give him evasion, but not useful at all to defend himself against Lesh unless he's trying to kill Lesh. And actually, he does kind of have a Lesh counter. Lesh has the BKB and the Bloodstone, but he's only got seven armor. So mm -hmm. if he does pick up like a medallion here 
or... But he's also weak on item slots. Medallion is an item slot, expensive items, because since, since its peak gold is low, and he's only got a Sol Ring and an Aqua. I, I feel like he just has to go for the big items here, because it'll make his item slots a lot better. So I'm going to guess Daedalus here is going to be his pickup, and that's I, I don't know, that's what I assume. Yeah, raw damage. Sumail gets caught out the hook shot. Maybe he though. He can't go around to June as he finds out. Oh, oh the Laguna though. Oh, great stun. And he feels a double stun. Oh, my goodness. Universe follows it all up with a beautiful empty center. And they got the gem three. Gem gets a snagged up rabbit. He doppelgangs. Goes up north. Looks to retreat. Him and Banana, the lone survivors here. Oh, they get the yields on top of the They can't get out. The only has Ghost Scepter. Has another kill. Four dead now. EG waiting for that team fight all game. That's got to feel good. Good after last game, man. They got the run off, but this game, the BKB was finally ready. Sumail had the items he needed, pops the BKB, and despite the great force staff from Clock, boom, got blown up by the Laguna Blade. Actually helped out by the fact that he hasn't gone eggs, and that's probably why he hasn't gone eggs this game. Because they've got a, a Skyrath Mage. If you turn it into pure damage, then you don't get that bonus. So all you need is the Mystic or the Arcane Seal, and bam, it's like you have an Aghanim Scepter, and they blew up that Clock, and the follow-up stun afterwards was game-winning after the Fissure. Just set up for that easy triple kill. They have a huge EG advantage. They are totally in this game and they totally have the counters to beat out the Lesh late. That definitely puts the ball right back into their court. And they're not looking to let go anytime soon. They follow it up, they get their own push. They don't do much to the tier two here, but the pressure is on New B to take the game back. They can do it. And for Moo, he does have a good chunk of chain saved up here, looking to itemize further. 2200 gold on his Lesh. June, he's going for an Agnum Scepter here on his clockwork. Banana just looking to continue to ward up at this point. They are just scouting out this Roche pit. It's a bit of a longer timer, unfortunate for New B. They didn't see this ward. They might not get it, actually. Look, they're putting sentries down. It doesn't quite have vision of the Observer ward. They'd have to run up the hill they to find it. They are fiending the wards down. Look at yeah. this. They're like, we want Roche. We want Roche. It's up in about a minute and a half. And I think EG can take the fight easily if they see it coming. And they've got an Observer Ward in the area, and they've been spotting all this movement. God, so many sentries put down. They put down five wards within 10 seconds here at the bottom, yeah. and they don't even see the one ward EG has over here on the high ground. It looked like they rocketed near it, but they didn't quite get the, ga uh, the glance at it. And they lost the gem. That was 900 gold that the Witch Doctor spent, which delays Dyer's the Agonim Scepter. Is under so despite the pretty much perfect game up until this point, one team fight loss and boom, newbie's in a bad spot because they spent all their gold on team fight items and were winning items, basically. And now that they lost that fight so hard, it puts them in a weird spot. Peel's got pretty good farm. He can deal with their heroes a bit, but there's so many good Dyer's synergy heroes on EG. Stunts, magic damage and some physical damage oh, to back it up. It's smoke time here for EG. Yep, they pop it right there, and they're going to go right back on the move while they feel like they have this bit of advantage. And what's worth it, no, PPD got his biggest economy boost of this game so far because of that previous fight. He's actually yeah. getting pretty close to a Blink Dagger now, Dyer's which, you know, in this kind of position, that's really all her shaker needs. The old smoke to find the team waiting for the Roshan. And they did lose their Observer Ward over here that was spotted eventually. EG will poke into Roche. It will be there. But will they go for it? They probably won't. Both teams are going to be aware that it is going to be up. So EG would rather fight first. If you go in for the Roche, you can get five-man wipes so easily. Too scary, especially with a clock. Yeah. So they lose their vision control over Roche. Uh, they, they do put another Observer Ward down, though. But with that gem, they're going to de-ward. They're going to be like, wow, 300 gold spent on sentries. All for one ward. And they kill the enemy ward as well. So I think it's going to be a bit of a stalemate now. Both teams will hang out close to the Roche area because neither one wants to let the other team take it. Yeah. And will one team be able to force a fight? Are they I was just saying, I just checked them. It looks like they're on cooldown. Okay. Definitely for newbie. I'm sure they would have loved to have got one there and then be able to go back towards the Roche, but they don't have that as an option. And now things get really tough then. Yeah. They don't even have a Glimmer Cape. It's Bananas. Ghost Scepter Rush here, I think was a bit of a mistake, actually. Ghost Scepter helps you against the Clinks and all, but if it does a Glimmer Cape instead, then it would be able to help your allies. And it kind of serves a similar purpose. I feel like he made a mistake going for this item. Very good against Mystic Flare as well. And Lena, like, the, the Ghost Scepter helps him versus the Clinks. Yeah. Nothing Dyer's else. Middle After tower Yules, it makes for an easy ally setup to save with the Clinks. Not going to be the case this time. Newbie are up to snuff with their latest Dota 2 items. The Glimmer certainly does add a whole new game. Here in this mid lane. Newbie nearby, but they're hanging out near the secret shop for now. Both teams very tempted. 
Uh, let's talk about itemization a little bit. Uh, it looks like Klinks is going for the Deadless, so not too surprising there. But the really cool one is the Phantom Lancer one. He went for an SNY build, which is almost always a Manta for PL, but you don't really need the Illusion spawn as much as you have in the past when playing PL. There's not, there is a silence against him, but there's so many stuns that Manta doesn't really cut it. So he says, well, I'm going to buy DKB eventually, 100%. So I'm going to get an S and Y because it's a better damage item. And it really is. So I, I kind of like the BKB. It's very rarely done here, but I think it's the right choice in, in this example because of the amount of stunts there are. They smoke, they go into the pit. Lesh steps out and immediately it's pinged and spotted out from this EG ward. So they know this is happening, Dyer's but it looks like they're not going to look to attack. respond. Huh. I don't think they know they're not going to make it there in time. Or I'm surprised they are about converging, that. actually. They are, but they're so late, it's going to be dead. Yeah, yeah. I think at that point you should have just went to do something else. They think they can show up in time, but they're not going to make it. That means that opportunities like this, June moves in, this is the hook forces thereafter, gets a hold of PPD. He ends up losing his own life, so good is going to be there soon on that killer game. Fight. They are not able to take down at all. Oh, this is the real rabbit. Oh, he's gonna TP. Can he get out? No Yules. Quick Yules. Now no stun. Up. Not will get no way. No stun available. Stun yeah, that one will miss. I don't have a bow for one second. That's a dead hero. What a fight from EG. That, that was that felt like newbie throw to me. Completely. The synergy of EG is really showing them. And the uh, bullets don't pan off again. Look at all this attack speed from Sumail, plus the Desolator. That looked like two Klinks hitting a Leshrac, not just one. So that was amazing. But the main issue was that clock hook. It caught neutrals. It eventually got on top of the Earthshaker, but he completely segmented himself from his team. He had to wait for his team to get closer, then hook shot in. Because he basically traded his life for a BKB on Sumail and the beat in the old beat from Selena. Not worth it at all. He had no chance of killing the Earthshaker there if Earthshaker had backup. So that was just really poor play, I think, from the, the clockwork, which forced his entire team to segment. Yeah. They had to follow, and then they were just completely vulnerable to all the other nukes and the epicenter and all that stuff. Newbie was not far enough ahead to take a fight like that. Couldn't agree anymore. Beautiful positioning end up working out. Because they split this way, they look to go for the backstaff. But that means the two hardest hitters right here were able to just catch everyone on the way yeah. up in a kind of a bad and blind position. That choke point working out beautifully for evil geniuses. And now look at this. This game tied up 14 to 14. But when you look at the network graph, it shows a whole new story. EG well on top, pushing near that 10K network peak. It looks like they're going to be in good standing if they want to close the series out one to one and split at least just one point each in their debut. But we'll hold our breath for now. They come out in two big skirmishes. Yeah, the Aegis is grabbed up and then quickly taken away from the side of New B. But we'll have to see how strong their defenses could be because soon enough, EG are going to come and knocking on the door. And they are. And that could be very soon. You know, the thing the front. The Burrow strike in on the June with a setup for a Mystic Flare. And they're going to get the easy pick on the clockwork. Sandstorm Steel, not exactly what you're looking for when you're playing Rubik. And they will collapse. Will they find the Observer? They actually haven't. Oh, the Sandstorm leads in, gets the Yules. And they're going to get the next kill on the banana. Now an easy cleanup to Fear is going to eliminate this tier 2. No backdoor protection is going to stop them from doing it. And they're going to go for the tier 2 next, it looks like. Just one right after the other here. And it looks like Sumail has to deal with the split pushing Rabbit. Gets out the Laguna. Rabbit almost in trouble. Double gang behind Sumail. Gets caught out with the Yules thereafter. And an easy solo pick for the young gun. Sumail on his Lita, making it look so easy. And another kill going on. Leshrac just died by the Roche pit. Now they have the gem back from their opponents. They have huge ward vision advantage, and their hero synergy and their counters are working perfectly. There's almost Dyer's nothing newbie can do at this point. Attack. They're just running right over them. There's even a Shiva's guard on the pit. This is going to reduce the attack Dyer's speed of the PL by 45. That's a huge reduction. And all those illusions attacking much, yep. much slower. They it's a hit. huge advantage. Yeah, and you can easily identify the proper PL because of the damage being put out. He did with Coming together beautifully right now for EG. They ascend into the high ground. They're knocking on the mid lane door. Forces out the buyback from PL, and that's all EG want. They see that, and they're like, it's time to go. They're just going to see if they can force Rabbit to just have to go into his piggy bank. He's hoping to save that money for the retort, but 
it's not going to be there. EG are actually not pulling off too far. They think that they can take this game, or at least this mid state of Rax. I, I, I think they can do both. I mean, they have a really big advantage here. The organization comes together, the synergy comes together. Even with a, a semi hard carry with Plinks, who sometimes peeks off a bit, they're playing Lena like a hard carry. It's really interesting in the build work now. Yules goes on here. Stun misses, he's able to get the kill. The suicide does come off though from Sumail and a nice defense from Newbie in the mid lane. That all let out with fear kind of being on the high ground because they had the vision. They yules him up and things get started a bit bit early there for maybe EG we're hoping for. Yeah, and Earthshaker as well is forced to blink aggressively to go yeah. for the fissure to try to help him out a bit. And then he ended up being out of position, so Newbie just kind of BKBs and runs him down. And the BKBs are really helping out there. So if it was just Sumail out of position, he BKBs, he can get covered and stuff, then it's fine. But because they had to reach out with like two or three heroes, it put him in a really bad position. And the BKBs ate up all the Sank. Sank can even get his ulti off there. Either he didn't even go for it because they all had Black King bars. It's like if you don't initiate first, then things are going to go really poorly for you, and that's completely what happened in that fight. Newbie got a feeling pretty good. After that strong defense here, we'll see if they can use this bit of momentum to try to get this game back. It's certainly still in hefty favor for EG, sporting about a 15k gold lead. They're going to need to do a lot more than that. They go right back to their jungle farm here. Do EG just go right back again, headstrong, right towards the newbie side? I mean, fortunately for them, those big ultis were not used. Yeah. So they do technically still have ready to go with Echo Slam yeah. and MP Center. I mean, why not give it another go? I mean, newbie's the same, really. They've got all their ultimates ready to go. They got BKBs up. I mean, they're going to be a little bit lower, perhaps. Let's just get seven seconds here. Rubik's finished a Glimmer Cape kind of out of nowhere due to that fight, so things are getting a bit harder. They also lost the gem in that fight, and do they have the connection? They actually have no detection for this team fight. They have been anticipating this glimmer cape, and it could be absolutely integral. For the throw, for the jumper, it's the one quick kill. Witch Doctor Ol is going to be expended for it. Just come right back, I guess. Like now that that's gone, their damage potential is even lower here. But they're going to play it safe. They got the range barracks. They don't want to mess around. They're winning this game. They lost that team fight. Things get a little scary now, so play it safe. And I think that's what they're aiming for. Like, Sand King's very close to his next item. Axe, Yule, or uh, Axe, maybe a Veil, maybe a Sheep Stick. Something like that might be really good. More disables is never a bad thing. And Sumail's got his Octarine Core finish. They're sitting in a really good spot. Wait for their next set of items. Uh, and I think that's all right. Like, the only thing Newbie's close to that's going to be really big is the Witch Doctor ulti. Um, the Glimmer Cape could do something. And Left Rack is nowhere near close to something big. He just finished the Ghost Scepter. So I think this is a smart thing. EG is getting bigger items in a very short moment, whereas Newbie's getting mid tier items. So they just got to wait a bit and then they'll be ready to go. Yeah. Newbie seem to be stuck on playing things on EG's turns. Go down that mid lane, they're forced to huddle together and pull up a defense, and you can see how easily EG can manipulate that. They just have fear, quickly sneak in, get the one racks, and they pulled out so fast. Maybe they kind of caught off guard. They committed the Witch Doctor ult, and then even after EG split, and they went all the way back, and they were doing their own angels, they fell at the bottom. Newbie kind of stuck around in their mid lane defending for like an extra full minute before they realized, oh, EG's not actually sticking around and pushing. Yeah. That's a lot of farm time lost, and then they quickly split thereafter. Now it looks like EG are going to begin coming towards the southern side here. Maybe a possible push creeping in from the bottom half. All waiting, of course, for that Roche to go to the eight-minute timer, and we'll see exactly how long it will take. And everybody on EG actually is really good for him. PPD, the, by far the least most fun, only has Blink with an almost force. And that's completely fine for Urshaku. You really don't need a whole lot more to be amazing at contribution with the skill points that you have. So yeah. they're, they're in a good spot. AUI, as per usual, has ridiculous farm rate. Arcane's mech force and a glimmer cape with an urn. So he's in a really good spot. Very close to uh, the Guardian Grief. So he'll have a couple more item slots and all that good stuff. EG creeping in this bottom lane now. 
Maybe already in their defensive spot waiting. This is time that Rabbit has to wait out and not be there. I mean, wouldn't you think maybe you should split push on the side and use your boot to travel to show up at the, the, the notice of defending? Radiance For now, top Rabbit top. Oh, I kind of agree with that. Uh, it's also very close to my back though, so uh, are you talking about that? I guess you're right. Yeah, you probably should be somewhere else, maybe. So we're getting Radiance game roaches up and it's dead. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 so fast, and he was there to respond. Get out. Oh, they're still gonna kill. They get a gold stun. No, they bump him back. Ian, oh, he's, dead. Hit. he's not. Oh, even he's alive. He forced out, got the blade off the Baron, barely alive. PVE trying to go for banana and help, but Sam Big dunk. tries to drop it down, but can't get it off because of the dunk from PVE. No death warrant for you. He's able to get the kill. The two for one split right now. We're good out. Boo! Oh, is running, but he gets caught with the Yules from Universe. Thereafter, once the LSA, eventually the burrow comes through. What a Bell gets the catch. Wicked six streak for him, but what a steal from June. That was a great Dyer's way to start the team barracks. fight, but he was a bit too far away. I really thought they were going to win that fight versus the EG there with that steal. I don't think they got the gold, surely, but what a Thanks. sick Aegis steal, and it made things very dangerous, but they are just too far behind here. This is a 20k gold lead. It's 80k gold for EG versus 55 of Newbie. That is a huge percentage advantage, and if they weren't so far ahead here in terms of farming due to the five mana Newbie, they would have easily lost that team by like that steal. Maybe a wonderful highlight for June, but coming out with a win is what's most important. And EG are already going for that. Dies on the front, and they clear out the mid lane track. Got him, and June moves in for Fear. Forces to the roll around him, and the pitcher flies out. Fear eats the cheese, will be okay. As Owie helps clean up, and they get June dead. Moves in for Sumail. This is probably the final hurrah from Newbie. It feels like trying to get EG away and out from their base. Let's force him to scurry back. Sumail caught in the corner. Double steps, moves away. Now they get the wheels can't the sail. Oh, great. Defusal. Defusal out of it. Tries to drop him. Oh, bro. Universe is going to stop him before he can get anything done. And now he's on the run, but he can't make it away. That's it. They get to clean up, and that was the final hurrah for Newbie. They call game, and this series ends up being split very one to one. Man, EG really still showing. Not only are they fantastic players, but what about that strat? It was so well thought out. Everything synergized well. Tons of disables. They had Skyrath to amplify damage. They didn't get eggs on. The Lena instead they said, we don't need that. We're gonna make you a carry with just bloodstone and transition into whatever items we need. And he, that was a carry Lena basically yeah. in the mid-roll. Didn't even have carry items with the bloodstone.